I tried to recreate the assistant demo from the OpenAI dev day in Python, in which the user asks to go mark the Paris top 10 tourist spots to visit, and GPT-4 apparently updates the map in real time. Hello data fans, as a developer enthusiast, I didn't immediately understand this black magic. Is GPT-4 generating and running JavaScript code that updates the map for you? When I don't understand a new feature, I go read the source code for the demo. I mean, they're called OpenAI, I'm sure they'll open source the demo app, right? Or I build my own Python web app in Streamlit to play with the new Assistant API. So let's find out if GPT-4 actually crafts code to control my Streamlit map or if it's not as magical as it seems. Open your favorite editor, create a new app.py script, and run the streamit run app.py command to display your new app in a browser tab. Write a ST title in the script and ensure it quickly live reloads into a beautiful app by clicking on the always rerun button. If you miss it, you can still activate it in the top right menu. Create two columns. Using ST columns, write some placeholder text in the left column and a plotly express map widget in the right column. Finally, wrap up your script with a chat input widget at the end, and that makes up the skeleton of our app. Now to add some OpenAI muscles to our skeleton. Grab your OpenAI API key from the API keys page, paste it into a new .streamit.secrets.toml file in the OpenAI API key line. Since we read it, I already know I'm going to use Mapbox to display map tiles, so grab yourself a Mapbox API key and add it to the same file. This file is like the keys to your house, you don't want to throw them into the public. Therefore, add the file to your git ignore so you don't push your secrets to the github streets later on by accident. If you're a developer, you tried to let ChatGPT generate code for you like I did in a previous video. I should ask ChatGPT. This is actually more stressful than I expected. Even with all of the prompt engineering saying like, You're a wise 100 year old Python master who should only generate code without any bugs. Would you really trust GPT-4 enough to run the code without validating it when it's capable of hallucinating this? A better way would be, here are some pretty fine functions with a description for you like this one will move the center of the plotly map. To create those pretty fine functions, head to the OpenAI assistant page, create a new assistant, name it whatever you want, instruct it to be an expert travel assistant that can display a map, and in the functions model window, add a JSON description of an update map function whose role is to move to coordinates on a map. The JSON schema consists of the function name, a description of the function, plus the typing and explanation of each argument you want GPT-4 to generate and send back. Save your new assistant, it's now ready to chat with you and control your Streamit app. <laughs> but are we ready to let our assistant control our Streamit app with predefined functions? Not, not, not quiet yet. Let, let me add a single entry point for our LLM to control our entire streamit script so it's not a mess. First, any global variable you want to reuse through the app, like the full chat conversation, should be stored in streamit session states. So initialize an empty conversation and current map coordinates in session state. Also, prepare references to OpenAI objects like an assistant object, a thread of messages, and a current run. We'll figure out each of those in a little bit. For debugging purposes, I like to display the full session state as a dictionary in the Streamit sidebar using the ST sidebar context manager. That sidebar is a bit annoying, so I hide it by default through ST set page config at the beginning of the script. We want a beautiful view of our session state in our app. So, in the left column, browse through the session state conversation in a for loop to display each message as a chat message. Nothing will be displayed for now since, you know, the conversation is empty, it's just the beginning of the date with the chat. <laughs> in the right column, pass the session state map coordinates into the plotly express map. Basically, the conversation and plotly map views you're seeing in the app are now fully modeled by session state. So all left is to control the session state model through user interaction. Now time for a little test. Which app interaction should run a callback that edits conversation and map session state? I'll let you think it for a second. If you guessed, whenever you submit text from the chat input at the bottom, 
Congratulations, you win an open AI Wait, way way. Add an on-change argument to chat input that calls a new on-text input method before rerunning the streamlit script from top to bottom. Apart from initializing the app, this on-text input callback should be the only, and I mean only place, where you control session state. I mean, I mean for this app at least. Wait, you don't know how to get the value from chat input in the callback? Well, here's a streamlit pro tip for you. Whenever you're in a widget callback, you can retrieve the value of any widget from session state by looking for the key argument from the widget in session state. Look for session state, input user message, and there is the value of the chat input widget. Now that the conversation was edited, let's update the map state to some random coordinates. Write a new update map function that takes a latitude and longitude, and also a zoom level, to update the map session state. The update map function here and the update map in the assistant page feel very similar, right? I hope you noticed. <laughs> then you can build a new key value dictionary which maps out the string update map to the actual update map function. Take a small break and play with your app a little. Uh, write text into the chat, look at it, update both the conversation and map session state at every submit, and um, yeah. It works. This is it. We have a single chat input callback that controls our full app by updating session state. If you want GPT to control the app from one place, this is the only bridge. Create a new OpenAI client using the OpenAI API key from ST Secrets. Then link to your remote assistant and store its reference in session state at initialization. The OpenAI Assistant workflow has three levels of abstraction. First, you have the Assistant object, which defines the instructions, library of predefined functions, and files to retrieve knowledge from. In this Assistant object, you can store a list of user messages inside what is called a thread. After adding user messages to your thread, you ask GPT to generate an answer given the full thread conversation. This creates a run. Now imagine there's a run going on whenever GPT is generating an answer. That run can take some time depending on the length of the answer. You will need to pull that run until it is finished to get the full answer. But wait, there's more. If you ask to move a map to Bordeaux, the run will detect it needs to run the update map method to move the map. So it pauses and asks you, Hey, I think I need to run update map with those Bordeaux coordinates. Please run it on your side and send back the results, huh? GPT only uses the function documentation and argument signatures to decide which function and arguments you have to run. And, and by the way, I'm actually impressed that it's not hallucinating the coordinates of Bordeaux. This should maybe be another get coordinates function that uses a Python package to geolocate harder international cities. But now that you know how the assistant works in theory, let's implement it in practice in the only bridge to our application. By the way, uh, this part may be a little too fast if you're trying to live code this. You can find the source code in the description under the subscribe button. You can't miss any of them. From the on text input callback, add the user chat message to the assistant message thread. Then ask the assistant to run the thread, which will initiate the generation of the answer given the conversation. Store the current run in session state so we can track it while it is running. Build a while loop that depends on a completed boolean flag. In this infinite loop, pull the run object stored in session state. If the run is complete, pass the flag to true. Else wait for a few deciseconds or hundreds of milliseconds. Why, why don't we say deciseconds? When the run is completed and you leave the infinite while loop because of the completed flag, retrieve the full conversation, which, which contains a generated answer at the end, and store it all in the conversation session state. Finally, add another if step to detect if the run poses with a function called request. For example, here's what happens when you ask to move to Bordeaux from the web playground. In that case, the run retrieval will return a JSON object with the predefined function name and Bordeaux arguments to run.
Oh, for each tool request it has, check your string to Python function mapping and run the correct function with the return generated argument. Here it will run update map with the Bordeaux coordinate. Run the function and send back the tool results to the run so it can resume. And now update map operated from the LLM assistant has actually updated our session state. So our map has moved on your chat holder and your assistant is aware of it because you sent it back some results. Is it busy? It's not magical to the point of having an autonomous agent generating and running its code in code interpreter or in your app. Instead, you configure a library of function specification so it maps user intents to those functions. Yet you're still in full control of the code. Uh, at this point, the LLM only orchestrates through the library of predefined functions depending on what you ask. You can add other tools like add markers to place markers on the top 10 Paris story spots or get the weather to send the assistant weather information. With multiple tools entered, you'll be able to ask more complex questions like mark the top 10 tourist spots around the Eiffel Tower that will be sunny tomorrow. It will simultaneously <laughs> run the moving the app, get the weather and add markers. A and sometimes it even suggests things by itself, like adding markers. So you basically have an automated natural language to rules engine translation, so yay. Okay, so I understand, uh, but is there a better way to style a similar demo in Python? Like if you want to have a more closely styled app, I'll be trying to build it with another library like Solara in this next video. So I'll see you around. Bye!